The Kennedy Assassination Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, was assassinated on November 22, 1963 in Dallas, Texas. He was fatally shot while riding in the presidential motorcade along Elm Street with his wife Jacqueline. A specially appointed commission to investigate the murder concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald committed the murder. Today, there are many conspiracy theories calling into question the results of the official investigation. According to opinion polls, more than 70% of Americans do not believe the official version of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Kennedy's visit to Texas was part of his 1964 presidential campaign. It is worth noting that the route of the march through the city was developed by special services. Together with the politician was his wife Jacqueline. The weather in Dallas that day was bright and warm, and the removable roof of the presidential Lincoln Continental convertible was abandoned. This was also done so that people could observe Kennedy's movement for themselves. John F. Kennedy's car was fourth in the column with four riders. In the limo sat intelligence agents William Greer, driver, and Roy Kellerman, in the driver's seat, Kennedy, in the back seats, and Texas Governor John Connolly, and his wife Nellie, in the additional middle seats. There were numerous cars with security guards, members of the delegation and journalists. A crowd of Americans filled the entire route, coming to see their leader. John F. Kennedy continued to smile and wave to his compatriots. Otras was met by people from roofs, windows and balconies. On that day, the man refused to put on a bulletproof vest and put two other bodyguards in the car behind him. At 12.30, Kennedy, surrounded by a motorcade, left for Elm Street. At the moment when the funeral procession passed by the building of the school book warehouse, the first shot rang out. The bullet hit John F. Kennedy in the neck, went through and wounded the governor. After five seconds, the second shot sounded. This time the bullet hit the president's head, filling the limo with brain particles. After that, the driver picked up speed and five minutes later delivered the wounded Kennedy to the clinic. You can see a photo of Jacqueline Kennedy trying to get out of the car a few seconds after the shooting. However, the injuries were incompatible with life, as a result of which doctors pronounced John F. Kennedy dead at exactly 13 o'clock. One hour and 20 minutes after the assassination attempt, the police arrested the only suspect in the Kennedy assassination, Lee Harvey Oswald. As the investigation found, Oswald dropped his weapon and immediately left the building. When he was walking along one of the streets, he was stopped by a policeman J.T. Tippett. As a result, Lee killed him and fled the scene. They managed to detain the suspect already in the cinema. An interesting fact is that in his youth Oswald loved Marxism and did not live long in the USSR. During the interrogations, it turned out that he had been cooperating with the FBI and the CIA for a long time. And yet there were so many inconsistencies and inconsistencies in the conclusions of the investigative commission that many Americans did not believe the official version of the Kennedy assassination. Even more suspicious among Americans was the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald by nightclub manager Jack Ruby. Jack shot the Kennedy killer as he was being led through the basement of the police department to be transferred to prison. It should be noted that millions of viewers watched the executions since all the events were broadcast on online channels. Ruby explained his actions as a desire to avenge the president and save Jacqueline Kennedy from being put on trial as a witness to the murder. American intelligence agencies conducted more than 25,000 interrogations and also studied all possible video and audio recordings from the crime scene. Later it turned out that not one but two or three people could have been involved in the Kennedy assassination. Also, a total of five, according to other sources, six shots could be fired. The main argument of the presented theory is the moment when the bullet hit John F. Kennedy's head. Experienced snipers claim that Oswald chose to shoot from the position behind the police and, consequently, the presidential limousine. However, the footage clearly shows that Kennedy's head was thrown up and to the left after being hit by a bullet. This can only mean that the fatal shot was fired not from the southwest but from the south or southeast. It was this sector that was not under the control of the police and special services. There are many other facts that refute the official conclusions of the authorities about the Kennedy assassination. In the following years, several people in the criminal world claimed to have developed a plan to eliminate the president. Versions were also presented in which the CIA was the main customer in eliminating the politician. There were also those who accused the mafia of Kennedy's murder.
This was due to the fact that during the presidency of John F. Kennedy, representatives of the mafia world began to be held accountable by about 800 percent more often. In 1994, James Files, who was in prison for the murder of a policeman, confessed to the murder of the president. According to him, he acted on behalf of the gangster Charles Nicoletti. In 2013, American political scientist Roger Stone, who was once Richard Nixon's personal advisor, publicly accused Vice President Lyndon Johnson of Kennedy's assassination in his book The Man Who Killed Kennedy. In the book, the author added that it was Lyndon and Governor Connolly who insisted on changing the already agreed route of the funeral procession. An interesting fact is that immediately after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Johnson swore allegiance to the American people on board the plane. Lyndon, mired in corruption schemes, needed to get as much power as possible so as not to get involved in court proceedings. The autobiographical book of CIA agent Howard Hunt, who died in 2007, was also published in the 21st century. Howard claimed that Lyndon Johnson, who was assisted by CIA agents, was the main customer of the Kennedy assassination. It is also assumed that most of the declassified documents have serious gaps that would help unravel the true motive for the Kennedy assassination. It is curious that after the assassination attempt on the president, none of his supporters went to the complete declassification of investigative materials. The assassination of John F. Kennedy is still considered one of the greatest mysteries of the last century. To date, dozens of documentaries and feature films have been shot, the directors of which present versions of the Kennedy assassination in their own way. Perhaps in the future we will learn new details of the terrorist attack, which will shed light on the events of November 22, 1963.